With all of these different methods of differentiation, we can still only take the derivatives of polynomial functions. Well, it's high time that we can take the derivatives of the three main trig functions. Before we go right into things, let's take a look at the graphs of sine and cosine and see if we can guess what derivative we should expect. Looking at this graph of sine x, the maximum slope occurs at 0, with a slope that seems to be about 1 when I extend the line. So we'll mark off a point of 1 for that slope. Looking at pi over 2, sine x has a flat top as it is the turning point. So the derivative is 0 here. If you couldn't follow that logic for that last statement, then no worries. A video will be coming out about graphing and how it relates to derivatives. Then, at pi, the slope appears to be equal to the slope at 0, but in the opposite direction. So we'll write that as a negative 1. If we keep approximating the slope, the points we've placed out appear to make a cosine curve. Keep this in mind. Now, examining the cosine curve, we see it starts with a slope of 0 at the origin. Then the slope is minus 1 at pi over 2, slope is 0 at pi, and positive 1 at 3 pi over 2. This distinctly looks like a negative sine x curve since it has a value of minus 1 at pi over 2 instead of positive 1. So let's write out the derivative for sine of x using the classic h approaches 0 limit. In the limit, which is a limit as h approaches 0, sine x plus h minus sine x over h, the first thing to note is the compound angle, which is x plus h. So let's apply the sine compound angle formula to produce sine x plus h equals sine of x times cosine of h plus sine of h times cosine of x. Substituting the identity in, it becomes the limit as h approaches 0, sine of x cos of h plus sine h cos x minus sine x all divided by h. We will first separate the terms that have a sine x in the terms that have a cos x on them. So sine x to the left, cos x to the right. And when we separate them using the limit addition rule. Next, we can factor out the terms that don't have an h for each limit, since their limits are unchanged by h approaching 0. So now the limit currently states sine x times the limit as h approaches 0 of cos h minus 1 over h, plus cos x times the limit as h approaches 0 for sine h over h. We already know that the limit on the right evaluates to 1 in the essential trig limit video. But let's take a look at the limit on the left separately. Well, this looks like a scenario that could apply a difference of squares to use Pythagoras identity. So we will multiply the top and bottom by cos of h plus 1. After doing this, the limit is now the limit as h approaches 0 of cos squared of h minus 1 divided by h times cos of h plus 1. On the top, that evaluates to minus sine squared of h, and then we can separate the limit into 2 using the limit product rule. The limit now becomes the limit as h approaches 0 of sine h over h multiplied by the limit as h approaches 0 of minus sine h over cos h plus 1. The limit on the left will evaluate to 1 as we've seen time and time again, and the limit on the right will evaluate to 0 since negative sine of 0 is 0, and the denominator evaluates to 2, eliminating the 0 of a divided by 0 scenario. Taking this back to the original problem, if the limit that we looked at separately evaluates to 0, then the only term that remains is the cos of x. Therefore, our suspicions were correct. The derivative of sine x is cos x. Let's examine cos x to see how correct we are there. The first thing we can do is turn cos x into sine pi over 2 minus x using one of the identities we discussed in the trig series. Taking the derivative of this using the chain rule, the derivative of the inner function is minus 1, and the derivative of the outer function is cos pi over 2 minus x. Using the same identity, cos pi over 2 minus x becomes sine x. So altogether, the derivative of cos x is minus sine x again confirming our suspicions. Lastly, we have the tangent of x. The first thing to do here is to use the tangent identity and turn it into sine x over cos x. Using the quotient rule, the derivative becomes cos x times cos x minus sine x times minus sine x divided by cos squared of x. 
Simplifying things, the derivative becomes cos squared x plus sine squared x, all divided by cos squared of x. The top simplifies to 1 using the Pythagorean identity, and this makes the derivative 1 over cos squared x, or more commonly, secant squared of x. To summarize, the derivative of sine x is cos of x, the derivative of cos of x is minus sine of x, and the derivative of tan of x is secant squared of x. No doubt, if you continue in math or keep watching this channel, that cyclical looking nature going on with the derivatives of sine and cosine will be very important. But if you just need to get through calc, then these derivatives are sure to appear in future example videos. Until then, keep on learning.